And here we're back for our chapter 5. We want to look at a little bit more details of graphs. So we're going to look at 5.3, interpreting and in sketching graphs. When dealing with graphs, we need to be able to do the following. First, we need to be able to interpret information that's on a graph. So if I give you a graph, can you understand it to know what's going on? Second, can you describe the situation? Describe what's happening as you read a graph. And third, can you sketch a graph if I give you an actual situation? So let's look at each of these three in a little more detail. Interpreting a graph. The following graph shows the distance a golfer walks from the start of the hole, the tee shot, to the completion of the hole, sinking the ball. So, we think of golf, we're starting with our first shot, we make three, four, five shots, whatever the case may be, and eventually we put the ball into the little hole. Here's a graph that shows one golfer's uh, hole. So we see we got their y variable, distance from the start, dependent variable. We've got time as our x variable, our independent variable, and we've got a series of graphs. So remember this here says it's walking distance. So when the line is moving, one, two, three spots, four spots, we've actually got walking. When it is flat, the golfer is not getting closer to the hole. He has stopped. So let's see if we can answer some questions based on this graph. How many strokes does she take on this hole? So remember, she starts off and she hits the ball. So there's one stroke. Then she walks to her ball. She sits there, lines up her shot. She hits it walks to her second uh, walks to the ball she gets to the ball she lines up her shot she hits it and then she moves she moves she gets to her ball she lines it up and she hits it and then she walks to her ball and the shot is done or the hole is done so she made one two three four so four shots. Oops, spell that right. So in this case you have to realize that a diagonal line indicates movement. A straight line indicates getting ready for a shot. And you also have to realize that she will shoot just before she moves. So every diagonal line here indicates that she had just made a shot. So in this case, you're t counting diagonals. Well, which shot takes the longest? So once she walks to her ball, she sits there. Maybe she has to wait for the next group to play. Maybe she has to decide on which club to hit or how she wants to hit the ball. So which shot takes the longest? We're looking at the longest straight line. So we've got a short one here, fairly long one here, and a medium one here. So this is the shot that takes the longest. Well, which shot is it? She shoots, she shoots, and she shoots. So she's setting up her third shot. So it's her third shot that takes the longest. And you're looking at the longest straight line. Now, don't get confused, because some people may say, hey, wait a second, it's the second flat part, so it must be the second shot. But you got to remember, she shoots before the diagonal happens. So the first shot occurs here at the furthest distance from the hole, and we keep moving up. Between which shot does she walk the fastest? So you got to remember that walking is the diagonal lines. Now, the steepness of our diagonal lines is the key here. Time is passing. If I'm walking really, really fast, I'm going to walk a large distance in a short amount of time. So in this case, I want our steepest line. 
So we have this one, this one, and this one, and this one. Just from a visual check, it's clear that this is my steepest line. So between which shots does she walk the fastest? Between the second and the third. We want the steepest diagonal. So just looking at a graph, we need to be able to interpret what information is being presented and be able to understand what's going on. Let's flip the page and look at a another graph. Describe a situation from a graph. A scuba driver records the time and depth every two minutes as, he, as a dive he makes or a dive he makes. Explain each section of the graph as it relates to the situation. So our diver starts here, the surface of the water. Now this is a little bit interesting because we have our depth going up on our y-axis. Now normally when we think of depth, we think of sinking, going down. But in this case, the depth will have to be understood that it's in a lowering or a negative direction. 10 meters below the surface of the water. 20 meters below the surface of the water. So our graph really gets flipped on its head. We do have time running down our x-axis. So what is happening during step A? Step A is basically he is at the water surface and he will descend to 10 meters. So during Situation A, the diver descends. And if you want to go a little more detail, he can diver descends to 10 meters. Okay, what's happening during section B? It's our flat section. What we have to realize is the diver isn't going up or down, so he's staying at the same depth. So perhaps he's exploring maybe a rock, maybe a, some fish, a coral reef, we don't know. But we do know that the diver is staying at the same depth. Stays at the same depth. So again, we could say that he's exploring. Okay, now what's happening during C? We're getting to a deeper depth in the water. So he's done exploring at 10 meters and he will descend to 20 meters. So again, the diver descends. And for one more detail, he can descend to 20 meters. Finally, what's happening in D? He makes an immediate turn, so he descends to 20 meters. Maybe he gets scared, maybe his auction's running low, we don't know. But he doesn't stop at all. He doesn't explore at 20 meters. He gets down there and immediately goes back up all the way to the surface. So the diver returns to the surface. Now again, we can ask some more probing questions. For example, uh, how long does it take him to descend to 10 meters? Well, starts at zero meters and there's 10 meters. What time frame is this? We can say it's two minutes. How long does he explore? Well, he explores from two minutes to eight minutes. So this is a six minute exploration. We could say how long does it take him to return to the surface of the earth, or surface of the water? So we come down from 10 minutes to 20, and this is a 10 minute to return to the surface of the water. 
So you can ask a whole bunch of probing questions. For example, what was his total depth? How long was his total dive? Which section does he take the longest? A variety of things. And now let's move on to our last example. Sketch a graph from a situation. Carla walks from her house to the store. Halfway to the store, she realizes she's forgotten her wallet. She walks back. She gets her wallet and begins off to the store. She shops for about 10 minutes and then returns home. So let's sketch this situation. So the first thing I do is I make my axes. Make them nice and big. And this one is going to be her distance from her house. And this one is going to be her time. I'm going to make this nice and big because I have a feeling this is going to be a fairly long graph. So how did I know which variable went on which axis? Well, a couple reasons here. Most of the time our time will be on our x-axis. But we also ask, have to ask yourself, which one has more variation? Does her distance from home have more variation? Or does her time have very more variation? Well, time is set. Time will progress at the exact same rate the entire uh, length of our graph. But our distance from home, that's going to change. We may leave from home fast. We may come back from home slow. It's going to have more variety. So more variety will usually go on our y-axis. So let's now sketch Carla. I'm going to change to a nice blue color here. Carla walks from her house to the store. So if she starts at her house, her distance from her house has to be zero. Now halfway, she realizes she forgets her wallet. So she's going to go from her house, walk to the store, and I'm going to get to a certain distance. I don't know what this distance is, but it's a distance. Halfway, she realizes she forgets her wallet. So it'll take her a second to forget her wallet. She'll stop, maybe check her pockets to see if she has it. So a very, very small time is going to pass where she's not moving from her house. She's then going to walk back to her house. Now, if you're like me, if I forgot my wallet, I tend to walk back a little bit quicker. So I maybe make this a little steeper than the actual walk. Now she gets home. Now she has to look for her wallet, so there is going to be some time that passes. So there's some time that passes while she gets her wallet. She finds it, maybe it fell behind her kitchen chair. And she goes back to the store. So I'm going to walk back to my store. How high do I go to get to the store? Well, what I have to really realize is halfway she forgot her wallet, so it should be twice this length. Now, this is a sketch, which means we're not using graph paper, we're not using a ruler, we're just putting a rough estimation. So, does that look twice as high? It's close enough. She shops at the store for 10 minutes. Now, how long should this line be? Well, we don't have actual numbers because it's a sketch. Now, it should be longer than it takes her to realize she forgets her wallet. And she probably didn't look for her wallet for 10 minutes. She probably found it in a minute or two. So it should be our longest line for sure, but how long? Who knows? And then she walks back to her house. Now she's probably carrying some groceries, so maybe her walk back is a little bit slower, so a little shallower, flatter line than any of the other walks. And there we go. Carla walks from her house to the store, Halfway, she realizes she forgets her wallet. She walks back home a little quicker, looks for the wallet and finds it, goes back to the store, shops at the store for about 10 minutes. Her distance from her house is not changing while she is shopping. And then she walks all the way back home. So we've sketched the graph from the situation. So let's go to our textbook now. We can go to page 281. 
Let's just try one from the A's, six from the B's, and one from the C's.